بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين قالوا له خالفت أقوال الشيوخ ولم يبال الخلق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم خالفت إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Look at the story of Fir'aun. Look at the role of the wicked advisors and the donkeys of Fir'aun. As powerful as Fir'aun was, he couldn't do the things he wanted to do without the evil shiyukh of his time. Fir'aun. Fir'aun was mentioned in the Quran 74 times in 67 different verses. There's a reason why he's mentioned so often in the Quran. The Fir'auns are always reappearing. The Fir'aunic tactics are always reoccurring. They're recurring. وَقَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ ذَرُونِ أَقْتُ الْمُوسَى وَلْيَدْعُ رَبَّهُ إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ Fir'aun gathers his advisors, his shiyukh. He tells them, let me kill Musa, alayhi salam. Like today, the baby Fir'auns, and the big ones as well, along with them, they want the righteous dead or in prisons. And... He said, Fir'aun said, let him call his Lord. Fir'aun is there in Allah. إِنِّي أَخَافُ أَنْ يُبَدِّلَ دِينَكُمْ He says, I fear that, may, that he may change your religion. أَوْ أَنْ يُظْهِرَ فِي الْأَرْضِ الْفَسَادِ Or that he may cause mischief to appear in the land. Fir'aun, the man who said, I am your supreme Lord. أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى مَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِ I'm your supreme Lord. He tells people, I don't know of a Lord but me. What's holding you back, Fir'aun? Why don't you kill Musa? Can anyone stop him? Even the tyranny in this verse shows you what kind of man he is. He says, let me kill Musa. And he gets arrogant with Allah. Let him go call his Lord. Let Musa go bring his Lord. I'm not afraid of his Lord. But you, my advisors, you, my shiyukh, I want to consult with you. Why? Because as Fir'aun as big of a tyrant and he, as he was, he couldn't kill Musa on his own. He needed his advisors, his salat shiyukh, the wicked ulama, the donkeys of the rulers. The man who said, I'm your supreme Lord is telling his shiyukh, let me kill Musa. I fear Musa, who's the messenger of Allah, is going to spread mischief. Fir'aun, feared a public outcry. He was arrogant with Allah, but he feared the masses. So he went to the devilish scholars for support. Daruni Aqtul Musa, he was in reality saying the to the Fir'aunic media, to his chiefs, to the advisors, to his shiuch, he's trying to tell them, convince the people Musa needs to be killed or imprisoned. The murji of Fir'aun. The Fir'aunic tactic is used today by the baby Fir'auns. And the big Fir'auns as well, both in the east and in the west. All the Fir'auns need donkeys to ride on to get their message across. No one listens to leaders. That's why they surround themselves with these ulama. Fir'aun smears the image of Musa. 
with two charges. He wants to change a religion. Meaning he wants to make a coup. He's in reality saying, Musa wants me replaced. He wants me replaced because if he says the religion wants to be replaced, in the head of that religion is Fir'aun, that means he wants Fir'aun replaced. The second charge, he gives on Fir'aun, that he will spread mischief. In today's terms, that charge would be, he's a terrorist, he's an extremist, he's helping the poor, so he's doing money laundering. Fir'auns always have 10 charges ready to be handed out at a moment's notice. The Fir'aunic tactic back then are the same today. Different players, same game. Defending women and children from being raped is terrorism. Going back to the Quran and Sunnah is fundamentalism. Believe in Khilafah is part of Islam, that's extremism. Following the understanding of the Sahaba, that's backwardness. Defending and speaking about the weak and the oppressed of this Ummah, that's being radical. When you're on the path of Ya'budunani, La Yushrikuna Bi Shay'a, never ever ever get perturbed or agitated at names or labels thrown at you. That's the path of Musa alayhi salam, that's the path of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that's the path of all the righteous. In fact, in this day and age, if the label is not given to you, then that's when you really need to check your path. When the founds of all times run out of charges to defame people, they begin to charge people with the truth. They charge the people of the haq with the haq. They will charge the truth with being truth. Amazing. And I didn't get that from me. It's in the Quran. You see it in practice today, but it's in the Quran as well. All the problems and solutions are in the Quran. When the people of Lut charged him and they ousted him, what was Lut's crime? Ali Sam. Akhriju ala Lutin min qaryatikum. Drive Lut and his family out of your town. Why? Because they're clean and pure. He's ousted. He's driven out of his town. That means he's punished. When you're ousted, that means you're punished. Why is he being punished? What's the crime of Lot? What did Lot commit as a crime? He's being charged with being a pure and clean man. His charge? Being a pure and clean man. Notice when they said Lot was a clean man, they didn't say Athar. That would mean just a clean and pure man. They said, يَتَطَحَّرُونَ which is فِعْلٌ مُسْتَمِرْ meaning ongoing, continuous, exaggerated form of purity. He's too clean. His purity and cleanliness is too much. He's ongoing with it. Noble qualities become crimes when the mischief and filth are the leaders. That's why I tell you today, when one is not labeled, that's when he needs to check his path. Today, uh, you know, in the news today, just today, seven uh, of our brothers, I read in a, in, in a headline news, were uh, arrested for being extremists and captured by, by special forces in, in Tunis. And you know what their, their case was? They were caught passing out flyers, deterring people and shops from celebrating the New Year's. That was their crime. So when you flip the picture over of Lul, and you look deep into it, you will see a good meaning and come out with a good feeling. What is it? If they say you're pure, you're pure. We don't want to sit with you because you're pure. We don't want to be around you because you're clean. What does that mean? What does that make the one who's saying it? That means they are in reality testifying about themselves that they're unpure filth. They are confessing to it in this life before the next life. When aspects of wala and bara become a crime or make someone an outcast for merely believing in them, what's that say? They are in reality confessing to being enemies of Islam. Let's go back and look at Fir'aun. He said to his shuyukh, to his advisors, to his people, let me kill Musa. The salafs, the murjia, and the donkeys they ride on, 
the Munafiqeen of Fir'aun, they said, say no more leader, we got you. That's basically what they're saying. Moses is a messenger, people are starting to know him and love him. When the righteous are loved, even though they're less, they may be fewer, they love with heart and soul. And it's not that easy for Fir'aun to kill him without the support of his shiuch, who will inject the masses with false talk as you're going to see. What do you think the Fir'auns of the East and the West, why do you think they surround themselves with certain evil scholars? If the Fir'aun who was bold enough to say, I am your supreme Lord, the one who said, my path is the only path. Fir'aun is Fir'aun. Even in this verse here, he says, let Musa call his Lord. I'm not afraid of Musa's Lord. Let him call his Lord. But he wasn't bold enough to act without the help of his media and his shiuch because of fear of the masses. If the father Fir'aun to these Fir'a'in of today couldn't do it, do you think the Fir'auns of today could do their evil on their own? All that scene that I mentioned to you is in Surah Ghafir. The scene ends there. That's it. He tells his, uh, his scholars what he wants, and the meeting ends over there. Now let's go to Surah Al-A'raf, and see the continuation of scene number two. In Surah Al-A'raf, Allah said, وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فرعون. Now the shiukh of Fir'aun took on to campaign for Fir'aun. They want to justify the killing of Musa. وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْ قَوْمِ فِرْعَوْنَ أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ You leave Musa and his people to spread mischief in the land? You leave him to do that? أَتَذَرُ مُوسَى وَقَوْمَهُ لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَيَذَرَكَ وَآلِهَتَكَ A rhetorical question. Why Fir'aun are you leaving Musa spread evil? It was Fir'aun's suggestion. But the wicked scholars were campaigning for his idea to promote the killing of Musa alayhi salam. They were evil, making it as if they were the ones who were suggesting it. Notice what they said. They said, O oh people, O oh Fir'aun, Musa spread in fasad in the earth. He's, he's spread in mischief. Number two, Fir'aun, people. Musa, he's abandoning your religion. He's choosing another religion. And now comes Fir'aun. They make him look like the innocent pure man and make Musa look like he's the evil one. Fir'aun suggested and wanted to kill Musa. But the wicked ulama of Fir'aun changed it around because they're evil. What's the difference between the ulama of, for example, Bashar or other tyrants like that, who paved the way for their Fir'auns to massacre and kill, or even worse than that, replace the laws of Allah on this earth with other laws, and justify it, and make it seem like it's permissible. Look at the delicate detail in both verses that I just mentioned. When Fir'aun told them in Surah Ghafir, he told his advisors as justification, Musa wants to change your religion or cause mischief. That's number one. His worry was to stay on the throne. When he said change your religion, that means my power. Because when he says, when he says Musa is trying to change your religion, that means he's trying to change me. He's trying to change me, myself. That's number one. Number two justification Fir'aun gave is Musa is spreading mischief. When the media, when the shiuch took that word, they did dirty campaigning for Fir'aun. But they were a little bit smarter. So they changed it around in the next verse. So they said, number one, لِيُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ They mentioned mischief first, then change in religion, which is changing Fir'aun. Why did they do that? Because when Fir'aun spoke, his number one worry was his power. The wicked shiuch, the advisors of him, now speaking to the masses, know that the masses care more about mischief. They want their neighborhood safe, the town safe. They, they care more about that than about Fir'aun being a leader or not a leader. That whole Indian scene over there was for the next verse. قَالَ سَنُقَتِّلُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَنَسْتَحِيِّ نِسَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ 
Fir'aun says, will kill their sons and enslave their women and will have irresistible power over them. They made Fir'aun seem like a poor, innocent little man who said, okay, if you insist, I have no choice. They made him seem like poor, innocent Fir'aun as if he was merely reacting to the people and the advisors in the shiuch. This shows you the wicked yet dangerous role advisors and some ulama play to rulers when they're corrupt. What you see today is no different. Evil comes from the palaces carried on the tongues of evil scholars and through their evil media. Listen to the tale of this verse, the end of this verse. وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ We have indeed irresistible power over them. Fir'aun could have said, وَإِنَّا لَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ We have irresistible power to them. Instead of فَوْقَهُمْ لَهُمْ could have been used instead of فَوْقَهُمْ In Arabic, both of them work perfectly. They can be used interchangeably. When he said over them, فَوْقَهُمْ instead of to them, لَهُمْ it shows the peak of tyranny. Many get cowardly in times like this. They don't want to speak the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to even practice the truth. Some are so terrified today that they are even afraid to think the truth. وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ That's the peak of arrogance. To terrorize people so they can't say a word so they can suppress the thoughts. That's the status we're in today. When the Fir'auns of today tell us, وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ We are irresistible over you. We say back to them what Allah said twice in the Qur'an, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِي وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ No, we got Allah. Allah is the irresistible. Allah is the supreme over all his slaves. Twice in the Quran, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادَهُ وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَ Allah is the irresistible, Allah is the supreme. It's amazing this verse is stating that Allah is irresistible and it comes right after the verse that Allah, after Allah says, and if Allah afflicts you with harm or difficulty. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ like we, like we said, you see you're a believer, you're going to be tested. So be firm, because Allah is the irresistible, Allah is the supreme. When the scholars of Fir'aun were able to succeed in saying and fooling the masses, Musa gave the solution to his people in four sentences. Each one of them is worthy of a lecture on its own. The first thing he said, إِسْتَعِينُوا billahi, Seek help in Allah. Number two, وَاصْبِرُوا And we need every one of these. Be patient. Number three, in al arba lillahi yuritha man yashaa min ibadeh. The earth is for Allah. He grants heritage to whomever He wills of His slaves. Number four, wal aqiba tu lil muttaqin. The end destiny is for the muttaqin. Stay firm. Don't back down on your belief. Don't change. Don't compromise. Don't mellow. Don't delude. Don't waver. The victory of the flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah flying high above is a victory, no doubt. But the ultimate victory is to die steadfast on the truth of Tawheed. Look at the people of the trench, the Ukhdud, the people of the Ukhdud. The blind man who was the king's helper and the king's friend who believed and Allah gave him his eyesight back, he believed in Tawheed. He was killed. The young boy his th who believed, he was killed. The priest who taught him, he was killed. The boy speaking the truth after they failed to kill him by the will of Allah, he said, you'll be able to kill me if you take an arrow out of my backpack and say in the name of the Lord of this young boy. He was killed and he was on the Tawheed. The masses who believed in them also were killed. That was a victory. When the blind man was killed on Tawheed, that's considered a victory. When the priest was killed on Tawheed, that was a victory. When the boy was killed on Tawheed, that was a victory. When the trenches were dug and the fire was blazing and they threw the people in it, that was a victory to them. When the mother with her baby stood before the fire and they took baby one after another and then they got to her last nursing infant and she became hesitant, 
the innocent infant spoke by the will of Allah, the golden words that we need today. He said, Mother, إِصْبِرِ إِنَّكِ عَلَى الْحَقِّ Be patient, you're on the truth. Everyone believed. They were minutes into Islam. They were minutes into Tawheed. Not a single one returned as a disbeliever. They know that this boy was not killed except by the will of Allah, the one and only one Allah. The Yaqeen manifested into their hearts that even the blazing fire before the eyes didn't waver their faith. We're not minutes into Islam. We're born generation after generation. We had Tawheed and a lot of time for Tawheed to sink deep in our hearts. But did we let these meanings sink into the, our hearts? When Allah mentioned the story of uh, uh, the, the people of the Akhdud, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُوا جَهَنَّمُ Those who harmed the, the believers and didn't repent. Those killed were believers. The killers were the disbelievers. But we don't know that they were doomed on this earth. The killers lived on. We don't know that they were ever doomed on this earth. Of course in the Akhirah, Allah said, if they repent, فَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ جَهَنَّمُ But in this earth, it seemed and it appeared that they're victorious. My point of that is what Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, remain in steadfast on the true Tawheed and dying on it is the ultimate form of victory. The flag of Islam is hovering high above on our lands. That's another form of victory. But the ultimate form is the one when one person, when a person dies on La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The verse I mentioned early on, which I'll uh, I'll conclude with, when uh, in the in the early part of the lecture, when أريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين. We wish to do a vic uh, favor to those who are weak and those who are oppressed in the land and to make them rulers and to make them inheritors. Now look at the conclusion of that verse. وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ And to establish them in the land and let Fir'aun and Haman and his host and his chiefs and his shuyukh receive that which they fear. Allah said, and will show Fir'aun and Haman and their soldiers what they feared. Allah will bring to reality what they feared. What did Fir'aun fear? What do all the Fir'auns fear? The victory of Islam and the demise of tyranny in their thrones. Fir'aun feared the Tawheed that a young boy in Bani Israel is going to bring. Therefore we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show the junior and senior Fir'auns of today that which he showed the Fir'aun of Musa. When oppression reaches its peak, and it has, when the war is on the deen of Allah, and it is, when the oppressed have no one to turn to but Allah, and we don't have no one to turn to but Allah, and Allah is more than sufficient, we don't say it as minimizing it, Allah is more than sufficient, then Allah, that's when Allah intervenes. That's the meaning of the last verse in Surah Yusuf. When the messengers give up hope, and they think that they were denied, and that's the end of it, and that they lost, that's when the victory of Allah comes upon them. This is an ummah, our ummah is an ummah that gets sick, but doesn't die. This is an ummah that dozes off at times, but doesn't sleep. Not since it awoke 14 centuries ago. If it was destined to die, it would have died with much worse calamities. But it is guided by Allah subhanahu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in He is alive and, who, and He never dies. The more they fight Islam, the more Islam intensifies. The more they try to turn off the brightness of Islam, the more it flares. When they leave Islam alone, it spreads and it extends. For them, it's a lose-lose situation. Allah is watchful over those who deter. Allah is independent of those who desert. Allah's wrath will never be turned from those away from those oppressors. Victory of Allah hovers above the believers waiting for the word of Bi'qun from Allah and it's done. 
So don't occupy yourself with the timing of the victory, but rather occupy yourself with implementing يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِشَيْئًا In this one third end of the night I say يَا حَيُّ يَا قَيُّوم We are in different continents actually who met for your sake and only for your sake and Allah is my witness that I, oh, I love you all for His sake Ya Allah, just as we gathered here, reunite this gathering under your throne on the judgment day. And then on pulpits of brightness. And then reunite us entering Jannah in Zumara, in this group. Then again, reunite us reclining on thrones in Firdaus, eating and drinking and talking about days like these. While you tell us, Eat and drink at happiness and ease for the deeds which you have done in the past. Jazakumullahu khaira wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.